Hello, welcome to the course, where we are going to learn about maintaining a healthy lifestyle to prevent disease and home-based care. This course is designed to provide accurate information, yet the information is not intended to substitute medical advice. So when you decide to implement some of the stuff we are going to talk about, then you have to work with your doctor to help you measure your progress. So in this course this what we are going to talk about, basic principles of healing, laws of health, dietetic principles, how to use the healing herbs, and essential oils. Now let's get started. In order for us to understand the basic principles of healing, first we have to define or understand the word disease. So what is disease? Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from the violation of the laws of health. So nature must be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and re-establish right conditions in the system. Disease is meant to be a friend not the enemy. It's the same as the signals that you see on your car dashboard, warning you that your car needs attention, there is something wrong with the engine. Your body works in the same way, but the signals come in the form of a headache, a cough, rash, tiredness, loss of appetite or a fever. There are many ways that your body gives signals and all it needs is help to re-establish right conditions in the system. The system goes into high gear in its efforts to eliminate these poisons, so we must aid its efforts by opening the avenues of elimination and they are, bowels, kidneys, the skin, and lungs. Make sure the bowels move every day by giving enemas and colonics and the sick person must be given an abundance of fluids. Daily baths must be given and there must always a current of fresh air in the room of the sick person during the day and night. Opening up all the avenues of elimination, you are helping the body regenerate itself and fight the disease. Now that we have defined disease and the fundamental steps of establishing right conditions, the next thing is to find the cause. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained and healthful conditions should be changed, wrong habits corrected. It's very difficult to permanently cure disease without discovering the cause and while you establishing that, your body implements self-healing mechanism. It is a remarkable fact that the body has built in ways to produce healing. The human body is subject to wear and tear but when disease strikes, regular functions are temporarily set aside. The body goes to work to regenerate itself. Instead of the body using its energy for food digestion and muscular activities, it switches to cleansing and rebuilding. It activates its defiance mechanism in the form of fever, loss of appetite, tiredness or rash. The body as it were shuts down or reduce all extra functions so the healing can take place. The patient feels weak, they can't handle much food, but the healing functions is in progress and it needs help in order to succeed. Now let's talk about the importance of diet. Fruits and vegetables which are grown in good soil will always be superior to those grown on depleted soils. The same principle applies to us also, a person who has established right conditions in the body through diet, will maintain a good health, than the person who is not. Yet basic scientific knowledge of human nutrition is almost completely ignored in the everyday feeding of the patients. Good health can be built and disease prevented by eating right and taking proper care of the body. Wholesome food for the person who is sick consists of fresh raw fruit juices and fresh raw vegetables juices. This is a juice diet, three or four times a day a glass of fresh raw juice is given. The best fruits are citrus or pineapple and the best vegetables are carrots, beets and celery. The best fruit vegetable combination juice is carrot and apple. Every home should own a juicer or juice extractor. A food blender is good when you are in health, but a juicer provides an ideal combination of the staple food that meets the needs of the sick so that they can regain their health. A juice diet is the only remedy or food for the sick that can provide nourishment and cleansing. Sometimes a light meal is given alternately with a juice diet, a day of one followed by a day of the other. But when the crisis from a fever or inflammatory illness has passed, a light diet should be started and healing is still going but the patient is on the mend. Such foods must include some solid foods that are raw rather than cooked, raw vegetables in the form of salad and steamed vegetables once a day and a protein once a day may be included. The kind of protein food depends on the ailment, the age of the person, weight, and other factors. 
No meat should be given to the person who is cleansing or recovering. No junk food. No processed white flour foods and fried greasy foods. Now let's talk about the laws of health and remember from the beginning. We learned that disease is an effort of nature to free the system from the violation of the laws of health. So let's go through each law and what are these laws? Sunlight. Air. Rest. Temperance. Nutrition. Exercise. Water. And trust in God. Now let's go through them one by one and we're going to start with sunlight. Sunlight strengthens the body's immune system, this is partly because sunlight striking the body increases white blood cells. It increases healthy circulation and turns cholesterol under the skin into vitamin D. The solution is vitamin D, but to manufacture it in the body, black people must have their bodies in the sunlight more than the whites. Dark-skinned people need six times more sun than white-skinned people to get enough vitamin D. On the other hand, they have less chance of developing skin cancer. Neutrophils common white blood cells are very important. They spend their lives within your body eating up bacteria, fungus, and other harmful invaders. After being exposed to the sun they in some way stimulated to chew up harmful invaders even more rapidly. Research experiments have disclosed that this increase of gobbling action is doubled after sunbath. Did you ever notice that people are more likely during winter months to contract colds, during spells of lessened sunlight? An interesting study related to this fact is that of the early polar explorers. After spending months in those icy areas with so little sunlight, they would always develop upper respiratory infections upon returning home. The lack of sunlight for eight months had weakened their immune systems and their antibodies and white blood cells were markedly decreased. Sunbathing combined with exercise lowers blood pressure by 15% and sunbathing alone it lowers it by an average of 8%. Two hours after sunbath an average of 13% reduction in human blood cholesterol occurs. Sunlight also affects the bones in children not getting adequate sunlight. The vitamin D needed to calcify the bones is not present in proper amounts for the body to lay down calcium in the bones. Now let's talk about another law and that is the air you breathe. Millions suffer from a wide variety of ailments that are partly caused by an insufficient supply of oxygen. For us to have good blood, we must breathe well, every cell of the body must receive a constant supply of oxygen, or they will weaken and die. But that air must be fresh to help you the most. The strength of the system is, in a great degree dependent upon the amount of pure fresh air breathed. If the lungs are restricted the quality of oxygen received into them, the blood becomes impure, and disease follows. Fresh air will prove more beneficial to the sick persons and far more essential to them than their food. It is of highest consequence to your life, health, and happiness that you don't keep fresh air in every room in your home and especially in your sleeping rooms. The effects of living in close ill-ventilated rooms are the system becomes weak and unhealthy, the circulation is depressed, the blood moves sluggishly through the system because it's not purified and vitalized by air. The mind becomes depressed and gloomy. If you have difficulty in going to sleep at night, try this simple remedy. Make sure there is circulation of air into the room. Slowly take several deep breaths, holding each one a moment before exhaling it. Another way is, just after eating and also before retiring to bed, go outside and take 18 or 20 deep breaths using muscles of the abdomen. Inhale and exhale slowly. This method will help you go to sleep. Air can also help in the healing of the wounds. It is a well-known fact that wounds exposed to sunshine and fresh air heal more rapidly than the bandaged. In fact, no wound will heal faster without air. Since lack of adequate fresh air causes sickness, how very important it is that fresh air be supplied to the ill so that they can become well. Doesn't it make sense to you, so get outdoors as much as possible and develop hobbies that are out in open air. Now let's talk about rest. Rest is one of the most basic healers known to mankind because the restorative power of rest is a key to the success of all other remedial agencies. 
One reason so many people have nervous breakdowns is that they try to surpass and have the supremacy. They go to high speed without adequate rest until the body machinery breaks under the load. Peace of mind does not come by being always in hurry, and hurry is often concerned with gathering up tomorrow's problems and trying to tackle them all today. Sleep is an essential function of the body and impacts every system from our cognitive function to immune health. Quality sleep can help us reset, recover, and recharge. It's absolutely vital to brain function, memory, concentration, immune health, and metabolism. Unlike rest, sleep is something your body cannot function without. If left untreated, long-term stress can cause chest pain, headaches, digestive issues, anxiety, depression, changes in sexual desire and inability to focus. It may not seem like a big deal to skip relaxation in your daily routine. However, there are several benefits to daily rest and relaxation and these are reduced stress and anxiety, improved mood, decreased blood pressure, chronic pain relief, improved immune health, stronger cardiovascular system. You gain all these health benefits by just giving your body some time to relax and rest. Now let's talk about temperance, which is self-control. We are here talking about self-control to succeed physically, mentally, and morally in life. We must have temperance regarding to things good and abstinence regarding things harmful. Even when eating the most careful diet you can get too much of a good thing. Have certain times to work and certain times not to do the same with your mind. Turn it off sometimes and just relax. The next law of health is the food we eat, and a lot of people struggle when it comes to this law. In fact one of the strongest temptation that men suffer, is upon the point of appetite. Fruits, grains, vegetables, and nuts, prepared in a simple way constitute the most healthful diet. Eating the right amount of the right food and only at the regular hours, is what is needed to bring patients back to health or maintain and correct wrong habits, like for example, cold water drunk with meals diminishes the flow of saliva. The colder the food or water the greater the injury to the stomach because very cold foods require too much vital force to be warmed up in the stomach prior to digestion. So that means, the food you ate will stay in the stomach longer. It is best that five hours elapse between meals. Two meals a day are better than three, especially for those who do little exercise. Late suppers just before bedtime are harmful. So these are habits that the majority of people do, not knowing it's actually not good for their health. Now let's talk about fortified foods in relation to a vegan diet. Because getting enough vitamin B12 as a vegan is known to be a challenge, many companies add it to food products. Even if you're taking a supplement, Try to add fortified foods to your diet so that you're getting B12 from a variety of sources throughout the day. Experts recommend between 25 micrograms and 100 micrograms per day. Although B12 is always the primary focus when it comes to plant-based diets, the other B vitamins are also worth a quick mention. They're readily available on a varied and rich plant-based diet. Eight substances are typically recognized as B vitamins. They are thiamine B1, riboflavin B2, niacin B3, pyridoxine EB6, cobalamin B12, folicin or folic acid, pantothenic acid B5, biotin B7. All of the B group vitamins function as coenzymes. That means that they're necessary for enzymes in the body do their work. What are enzymes? Enzymes are biological catalysts. They're compounds that speed up chemical reactions that occur in the body. Without enzymes, such reactions wouldn't occur fast enough to support human life. Coenzymes are necessary to allow enzymes to function. The catch is, enzymes will continue to function again and again, however, coenzymes are broken down in the process. This is why the B-group vitamins must be replaced through the diet on a daily basis. Aside from vitamin B12, the other B-group vitamins are well represented in a plant-based diet. Grains and legumes are great sources. 
As you'll be eating plenty of these for protein and energy, you'll also be getting plenty of B vitamins too. Good dietary sources of B group vitamins are, pulses or beans, whole grains, tempeh, potatoes, bananas. Another common fortified vegan food is nutritional yeast. The yellow flakes have a cheesy flavor and are delicious to add to dishes like vegan mac and cheese. Breakfast cereals are commonly fortified with vitamin B12 also, heck the label, but try to pick a low sugar, high fiber cereal. Another law of health is exercise, and one of the studies on the relationship of exercise to aging was done to 200 men and women and after six weeks, their blood pressure dropped, body fat decreased and oxygen transport increased. Here is a summary of what regular exercise can do for you right now. Exercise can improve the tone of your muscles and blood vessels, changing them from weak and flabby tissue to strong and firm tissue, often reducing blood pressure in the process. It will increase the efficiency of your heart in several ways. Gradually eight will grow stronger and pump more blood with each stroke, thus reducing the number of strokes needed to supply your body with blood. It will improve your digestion by quickening the circulation and helping to lift the blood back to the heart from the digestive organs, and thus normalizing your bowel action. It will increase the efficiency of your lungs, conditioning them to process more air with less effort. It will increase your maximum oxygen consumption by increasing the amount available and the efficiency of delivery to the cells. Some studies have shown that moderate or vigorous exercise can reduce blood cholesterol levels. One of the great faults of our civilization is that our young adults at about 25 become too busy to exercise. Yet for the next two decades they probably need it even more. Walking is one of the simplest and best exercise. Jogging is fine when you are still young and do not stick with it too many years. The problems lies with bones and joints, they were not made to take punishment of running day after day. Walking is more beneficial in the long run than high-impact workouts. Another law of health is water, and it has been found that water intake can increase physical endurance ability to work by as much as 80%. If you do not drink water your blood thickens and flows with greater difficulty. This can cause trouble not only in your body tissues and organs, but also to your heart that must pump that slugged blood. Lack of water not only affects your health, it affects work production as well. Athletes in particular find that a slight decrease in fluid will greatly affect performance. The countless millions of cells inside of you are constantly being bathed in water. And this is not merely soaking process, but a re-washing activity done by our bloodstream. Water in the blood brings nutrition and oxygen to your tissues and carries off waste. It is no wonder that this most precious commodity should be needed by mankind, not only inside but outside as well. A cold bath is an excellent tonic and a warm bath opens the pores and aids in the elimination of impurities. The last law is the one that is very important and that is trust in God. And if you sitting there thinking what's the connection between God and my health, and the answer is are everything. For one, he created us and he knows everything about us and there is help for those with evil habits that grip them. He can break the chains, transform the mind and remake us into the image of God. Turn the eyes not to the dark cave of despair but upward to Christ, the glory of his unchanging power will do for you that which you could never do for yourself. He who made man's mind knows what the mind needs. Now we are going to talk about the healing herbs and how to use them. Dry herbs if they remain in a dry place, they should be good for quite some time. If you can't afford the, the glass jars, it is generally best to store herbs in brown paper bags in a cool dry area. The herbs should be labeled, dated and well organized in the herbal cabinet. Now let's talk about some of the preparation of herbs. Infusion. 500 milliliters boiling water is poured over 30 grams dried herbs. Cover it with a tight-fitting lid, so steam will not escape. Let it stand, steep, 20 minutes. Strain off the clear liquid. Immediately use or keep in the fridge a short time till used. The average dose is one tablespoon of the herb per teacup. Take three times a day. 
Decoction. Place 30 grams dried herbs or 56 grams of fresh herbs put in 800 milliliters of cold water. Bring to boil then strain off the clear liquid. Allow to settle and cool slightly. Drink liquid while still warm. Average dose, 1 tablespoon to 230 milliliters water, take 3 times a day. If you are using the roots, you have boiled them for 15 to 20 minutes, then strain off the clear liquid. Allow to settle and cool slightly. Drink liquid while still warm. Now let's talk about important facts about herbs. Storage. Herbs are best stored in glass jars, not exposed to sunlight for long periods of time. Weight factor. Larger persons require larger amounts than smaller or underweight individuals. Children and the elderly need smaller doses. Climate. The medicinal effect of herbs is intensified in hot climate, therefore give less at such times. People vary in their reaction. Some people are more intolerant to herbs than others, it is always safe to start with smaller doses, then build up to larger dose. Increase slowly remaining to each level for 2 to 3 days to observe for unusual reaction. People with high blood pressure. These people should avoid herbs that stimulate heart or constrict the blood capillaries and arteries. When herbs are combined. Herbs are frequently combined, but if not done properly one herb may overpower or neutralize the effects of others. So these were the important facts about herbs and now I want to talk about the herbs for children and they are. Spearmint. Catnip. Chamomile. Nettles. Chickweed. Alfalfa. Let's go though them one by one starting with spearmint. The herb is mainly used for for colds and flus, cramps, indigestion, gas, diarrhea, fevers, and headaches. Catnip is wonderful for children and infants when gas, stomach cramps, or nervousness occur. It can also be used for mumps, fevers, diarrhea, headaches, hysteria, insomnia, morning sickness, and smallpox. It stimulates appetite. Chamomile is good for insomnia, appetite, reduces inflammation, dizziness, rashes, and swelling. Nettles is good for expelling phlegm from the lungs, hay fever, gravel in kidneys, for asthma when taken for prolonged period of time, diarrhea, and inflammation. Chickweed may help in blood toxicity, fevers, inflammation, colds, coughs, reducing excess fat, skin diseases, and building the blood. Alfalfa helps in the assimilation of protein, fats, and carbohydrates and is an excellent blood purifier. It lowers fevers, cholesterol, balances blood sugar, hormones, and also good for stomach ulcers. Now let's talk about the herbal properties. Medicinal herbs produce certain effects on the body, a list of these possible effects is called herbal properties. One herb will produce certain effects while another may produce some of the same ones, plus certain others. These are some of the examples. Alteratives, blood purifiers. This herbal action is often secondary or tertiary to another action within the same botanical. Alteratives, blood purifiers, can support your body's own natural processes and help restore proper elimination and other functions. They help to keep us healthy and restore vitality. What are some alterative herbs? Burdock Alfalfa Echinacea Nettles Barberry and Eyebright The second property is anodynes. These are herbs that will relieve and soothe pain by reducing the excitability of the nerves and nerve centers. Examples are skullcap, chamomile, echinacea, hops, lobelia, ginger and valerian. The third property is anticatrals. These are herbs that eliminate mucus conditions. What are some example herbs? Angelica, Barberry, Cayenne, Comfrey, and Wild Cherry. The fourth property is antibiotic. Herbs which only inhibit growth of viruses and bacteria, but help promote the body's own immunity. What are some example herbs? Chaparral, Echinacea, Pau di Arco, Golden Seal, Myrrh, and Garlic. The fifth property is antispasmodics. Herbs used for camps, muscular spasms and convulsions. 
Examples are black cohosh, blue cohosh, cayenne, fennel, garlic lobelia, peppermint, raspberry, sage, skullcap, and valerian. These herbs are helpful during tetany, extreme irritability, feebleness, hysteria, intestinal, leg and menstrual cramps. The sixth property cardiacs. Herbs that increase the power of the heart. Examples are black cohosh, hawthorn berries, and motherwort. The seventh property is deobstruence. Herbs that remove obstructions examples are barberry for liver and gallbladder, culver's root for the bowels, golden seal for glands, gravel root for kidneys, hydrangea root for kidneys, plantain for blood and kidneys. When a damage is done to the bowels by the obstruction, marshmallow and comfrey will repair the damage. The eighth property is diaphoretics. Herbs which increase perspiration. They affect the entire circulatory system and fall into three subtypes examples are angelica, blessed thistle, boneset, buchu, peppermint and yarrow. The ninth property is discussions. Herbs that aids in dissolving abnormal growths or tumors, examples are red clover, chaparral, black walnut, burdock root, devil's claw, poke root only used externally. The tenth property is diuretics. Herbs which increase the flow of urine. Examples are burdock root, chaparral, dandelion, hawthorn berry, and white willow bark. The eleventh property is emetics. Herbs which induce vomiting and examples are lobelia, barberry, and chaparral. The twelfth property is expectorants. Herbs that help excrete mucus from the throat and lungs. Examples are chaparral, comfrey, fennel, fenugreek, lobelia, and plantain. The thirteenth property is febrifuges. Herbs which reduce fevers, examples are boneset, catnip, dandelion, hyssop, peppermint, white willow, and yarrow. The fourteenth property is galactagogues. Herbs which help secretion of milk and example are, anise seed, fenugreek seeds, dandelion, fennel and raspberry. The fifteenth property is hemostatic. Herbs that stops internal bleeding or hemorrhage are bayberry, bee root, nettles, white oak bark, witch hazel, and yarrow. The sixteenth property is lithotriptors. Herbs that dissolves and discharge urinary and gallbladder stones and gravel, examples are gravel root, corn silk, barberry, buchu, dandelion, chaparral, juniper berries, and marshmallow. The seventeenth property is nervines. Herbs that act as tonic to the nerves, they relieve pain and regulate the nervous system. Examples are hops, lobelia, small amounts, skullcap and wood betony. The eighteenth property is ophthalmic. Herbs that help heal the eyes examples are eyebright, chickweed, fennel, mullein, and rue. The twentieth property is oxytosics. Herbs that assist labor or promote easy childbirth examples are angelica, black cohosh, blue cohosh, juniper berries and raspberry. The twenty-first property is vulneraries. Herbs that promote the healing of cuts, wounds, and burns by protecting against infection and stimulating cellular growth. Examples are aloe vera, tea tree oil, comfrey, fenugreek, plantain, slippery elm, and yarrow. All these were herbal properties that provides healing to the body. We have almost reached the end of our course and I would like to thank you for make it this far. Now we are going to talk about the essential oils. Essential oils are always applied externally, they never, never swallowed. Taking them internally may be fatal. They are applied to the skin and used as an aroma to help a certain physical condition. Direction for use. Dilute a small amount in either water or a carrier oil. Either apply it or inhale it and the best carrier oils are, grapeseed, apricot, almond, olive and joba joba. Let's say you want to make a massage oil, you take lavender or helichrysum 25 drops, and you add to 60 milliliters of carrier oil. Maybe you want to add to your bath, you take bergamot or lavender 8 drops oil to 1 cup water and put in a bath. Hair rinse, add 8 drops oil to 500 milliliters of water. Lemongrass 4 drops and lavender 4 drops. Hair conditioner, Add 1 drop oil to 400 milliliters unscented conditioner of lavender, rosemary, 
cedarwood or lemongrass. Now let's go through some of the essential oils and their benefits. Eucalyptus. It's an antiseptic, antiviral, decongestant, when rubbed on the chest, reduces fevers and aches. Peppermint. Useful for headaches, fatigue, congestion, fever, muscle soreness and sinus problems. It stimulates an increased blood flow. Tea tree. Antiviral, anti-infective, fungicide, antiseptic. It helps cure athletic foot, dandruff, bronchitis, and ringworms. Turmeric root. Turmeric prevents skin cells from clumping together and clogging the pores. Since it's antiseptic and antibacterial, it may effectively stop the growth of acne-causing bacteria. Additionally, its anti-inflammatory properties promote quicker healing by calming areas that are already inflamed. Camphor. It can be used topically to relieve pain, irritation, and itching. Camphor is also used to relieve chest congestion and inflammatory conditions. It has a strong odor and taste and is easily absorbed through the skin. Lavender is believed to have antiseptic and anti-inflammatory properties, which can help to heal minor burns and bug bites. Research suggests that it may be useful for treating anxiety, insomnia, depression, and restlessness. Joba 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 is applied directly to the skin for acne, psoriasis, sunburn, and chapped skin. It is also used topically to encourage the regrowth of hair in people who are balding. Wheat Germ Wheat germ oil is a great source of vitamin E, which is said to be a powerful antioxidant. It helps fight against free radical damage. Wheat germ oil is a natural oil which helps in cleansing the face efficiently. Mint Useful for headaches, fatigue, congestion, fever, muscle soreness, and sinus problems. Cinnamon Leaf Cinnamon essential oil is reputed to calm dry skin and to effectively alleviate aches, pains, and stiffness experienced in the muscles and joints. Its antibacterial properties make it ideal for use in addressing acne, rashes, and infections. Wintergreen the active ingredient in wintergreen oil, methyl salicylate, is closely related to aspirin and has analgesic and anti-inflammatory properties. As such, products containing wintergreen oil are often used as an anti-inflammatory and topical pain reliever. Congratulations, we have come to the end of the course and I would like to thank you for enrolling. If you think this course was beneficial to you please share with others and if not, I am really sorry we will try to do better next time but still you have to share and hear others' opinion. If you have any question or need more resources, send us an email or visit our website. Take care and God bless.